Hi, and welcome back to New Game, New Rules. Uh, this is the UFO Disclosure Data Dump. Uh, this is my complete picture set for the most part, and I've lined everything up so it'll make logical sense for you. And I'm going big here. Uh, in this episode, I'm going to detail a United States uh, Space Force UFO vehicle that was designed by Dr. Pius of the uh, United States Navy in Virginia. He's like a mad scientist that came up with this article that was in the drive, and I will show you this article. And it basically describes something that's really pseudo science, as some other scientists seem to call it. And what's really interesting is there's a mystery. What are the U.S. Navy videos? What's under that veil of secrecy? Um, what are uh, these triangle UFOs? I'm going to answer both of those. But I want to rewind the tape to the beginning a little bit so everybody's clear. This invention swims, it's aquatic, and it flies. Now, there's another item that's under the U.S. Navy three videos that are there. They're attacking a battleship, according to Luis Elizondo. Um, those are not these. This is a physical, human-made U.S. military machine. The other item is a animal with this exact propulsion system, except on natural. And that animal happens to swim and fly. So, the question was, what's under the U.S. Navy videos, and it swims and flies? What's under the veil of secrecy of this UFO uh, patent here? Well, it's fully operational, and I'm going to show you some great pictures, and I'll bet you there's a back window with an American bumper sticker in there. So, I'm going to close this out. If you go to the drive, you will find all of patent information, all kinds of good stuff. But when you get to the end, you'll find an objective, and it's to design a test article and related instrumentation, blah, blah, blah. Uh, feasibility of achieving high electromagnetic field energy flux values towards the design of advanced concepts for high density, high power systems under the power system and blah 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 and it gives you the price and all the good stuff and somewhere here i found where it said it was aquatic and airborne so i guess i should probably find that again here i know it's in the article as well but i want to show you right here a uh, warfighter benefit in other words, that's going to the military. Realization of this technology moves propulsion technology beyond gas dynamic systems and enables the design of a field propulsion based hybrid aerospace undersea craft. So there we've got what the question is. This is the answer. This picture and this picture is amoeba arcella. This picture and this picture are taken from a camera point of view from the ground by I believe his name is Ken Rice of Oshawa, Canada and he's the quickest draw camera guy I've ever seen. This is a clear top and bottom view of what's under the US Navy uh, videos, this big conspiracy. Now this picture, this picture, and all these pictures are microscopic. Anyone who owns a microscope and applies science can order uh, amoeba arcellus from a science supply house that supplies frogs to the schools etc etc and you can get them live and dead and what's interesting is if you put them under a microscope they start spinning like this picture and I have a video of it that I'll show towards the end I may have to do another series to put in all these videos but these guys will spin and they are microscopic. This is the same pictures. This is a really big close-up of them. But what you can see here is called splines. And what this guy, these are the splines coming through right here. And he has learned to inflate himself. 
Now, I already did a video explaining their propulsion, but I'm going to explain pictures as I go. And it's important to note that he is filled with carbon dioxide and is achieving neutral density. In other words, this is like the cockpit uh, in an airplane where they can go above and below pressures that humans couldn't sustain because this is an animal. This tail is being used as a rudder. It's called a flagella. Um, this is the guy also responsible for cattle mutilations and human mutilations. However, it's friendly unless you're in the wrong circumstances, and I'll detail that. Now, this guy drops little suedopods. They're called false feet, and he's able to use these little vacuoles, uh, contractile vacuoles, as storage tanks for things like food, and his favorite food is bacteria. Now, he can also ingest and accumulate a bacteria called colostrum. And it is the natural bacteria occurring uh, active ingredient in Botox, which is why you can liquefy the animals. But right now I'm jumping way ahead. I want to just begin. This is Amoeba Arcella. She's 25 foot in diameter. I will explain the size discrepancies. I'll explain why she's radiation proof, how she flies, absolutely everything to a T. But first, you need to realize that this is microscopic and it's identical and these two pictures prove that because you can see they're identical. It's the same thing. Now this is under a microscope slide and this is 25 feet so I got a lot of explaining to do but I need to start with some definitions so that you understand what I'm talking about. Whenever somebody solves something, you got to unfortunately learn a couple things and I've done all your homework for you. And we're going to start out with definitions. And I'm just going to cruise through. The first thing that's blatantly obvious is one item is microscopic and the other item is 25 foot. And that's a big discrepancy. Now, this animal was born in the Ordovician period of time, and this is similar. This isn't as far back, but you can see here in the Ordovician period that this cephalopod here is absolutely enormous next to a human being. These shells are absolutely, I mean, this is some frightening stuff, folks, but that means that bacteria easily were originally about 20 to 25 foot in size. Now, why? The Ordovician period is beautiful. There is no human intervention, so it's basically God's science experiment. And these guys flourished because the conditions were perfect for all aquatic animals at that time. This was their moment in life to shine. And some of the animals carried over, some of them went extinct, but Amoeba Arcella's motivation originally, she was born in the water just like these guys with these guys. These guys would have hunted her to near extinction, so she was motivated to get out of there. And again, I'm going to do that in part two, so I explain how she learned how to float and then glide and then fly and then accumulate this power system and how she goes in and out of the atmosphere. But I'm going to show all those pictures so you'll be able to see them, but in detail I'll go through those steps again. And... This shows the same thing. Uh, from the Ordovician period, the cephalopod, which should be this guy, uh, should be, uh, was the dominant species. Now, the four items that we need to learn in our definitions are as follows. Amoeba, which this is a diagram of one. Uh, we need to know what it is under the microscope, just the basics. You don't need to go studying here. If you do want to learn more about it, there's a great article. Uh, amoebas are crafty, shape-shifting, I think, creatures. And that's in my introduction to Notchback. You can look that up if you can't find it. But it's a great introduction to what these guys do, and they change shapes. And this is the bottom view. This is the top hard shell. Um, it's not hard like a rock. She's literally made out of calcium and nutrients, so it's more like a jellyfish. This is the top with the suedopods poking out. 
so that she can move. She can grab over here and move, balance herself. And this picture is going to come up a lot because it matches a lot of the pictures that I have. This is a basic amoeba under a microscope. This is a nucleus, its brain, its body. These suetopods represent its legs. And over here, this is on Earth under a microscope how it eats. Now, this guy's had 500 million years to evolve. Around here, he's going to use these little food vacuoles. And this little suetopod is now so good that it can suck through here like a tube to fill these food vacuoles and it can eject out. So it's kind of like a syringe, but it takes a little bit of time. And at the end of these suetopods would look nearly like an elephant's trunk, maybe a little bit smaller. And remember, this guy's 25 foot in diameter, not this one, but the other guy. That means his suetopods can reach out quite a way. So, and don't forget he flies. Now, this is just the basics, amoeba, cell brain. Now, amoeba arcella has multiple nucleuses and she's capable of binary fission and multiple fission. And this is binary fission, and all it means is one parent amoeba splits its DNA and its nucleus, and it shows you here, and it turns into two. Now, why is this important? In one of those three Navy videos, and I'll show you, the UFO splits in two. And I've seen this under a microscope until my eye's been bruised, so I've seen this regularly. It's not something that's unexplained. And if this guy, like I said, survived from 500 million years ago, we've got our culprit. But I'm going to show you a lot of evidence. Here's another amoeba diagram, another. Here's what's called multiple fission. That's our third important uh, definition here. And that means that instead of having uh, splitting into two equal twins, she blows up her body and many daughter cells produced by fission. Typically it would be 7 to 15 released, but it could be in an area of 30 plus. And it's called the daughter cells released. Now I like the name Arcella, but that's going to change to the watcher here at some point. But I'm going ahead of myself here. So we've learned that the Ordovician period was 500 million years ago and things were big and this is where she was born. We've learned about binary fission and multiple fission, that one can turn into two and one can turn into a dozen. And we've learned the basics of an amoeba and their shapes. Now they've got about half a dozen major shapes, about a dozen where they're switching and I'm going to try to show you all of them. Uh, this is important to note. This is basically that time era. And what happened is this would have been Arcella's original home. And this landmass, I believe, slid under Antarctica. And it's the only remaining original uh, nest, to so speak. So, under the uh, ice layers in Antarctica, there is not a UFO. There is a nest of animals that are referred to uh, as a amoeba arcella at this moment, and then the religious impacts I'll go into later. So, I want to go back. This is the next lesson, and this one's really critical because this explains why they're attracted to airplanes, satellites, the International Space Station, uh, our wonderful Black Aces pilots, uh, the naval destroyers, our beautiful men and women in service. Um, what else? Probably submarines and everything else. So, under this experiment, I'm going to add a few things. One thing is if you put a laser pointer, one of those LEDs like on the end of your gun or that you play with your kitty cat, and you do this experiment, you put three live ones under a microscope. When you do the LED this way, it is going to repel from it this way. And I'll show you videos where Amoeba Arcella is actually flying and kids are out in the desert actually chasing her. Uh, with the laser LED. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go to that right now because it's kind of sort of important.
important to add that. So let's see. Da, 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 da. And this is actually an Arcella flying. You guys call it a UFO, I call it an animal, because I'm going to prove all its body parts. And as you can clearly see, this guy that's out in the desert is chasing it with a LED light, and it is repelling from it every single time with all its might. This guy is chasing an animal that can kill him. That's really not wise. But people got to have hobbies, I guess. So let's go back to my chart. So we understand that lasers repel them. So I guess if I was in law enforcement, that's a good trick to know. Also, carry two flashlights if you find one. Because if one goes out, you've given away your uh, location by the flash of light going out. And now you're in deep doo-doo. So uh, if you're investigating two officers, two flashlights each, then you're both safe if you got to split up. If you're a rancher or a farmer, just go out with two flashlights. you got to carry your gun too, no problem. Now, laser LED, they run away. Now, on this positive cathode side, I want to add some pictures over here so you can mentally see this. Add these. Don't forget these. By all means, don't forget these. And definitely don't forget this. So, why are all of those positively charged? Well, the simple basis of friction will cause that, but also on a lot of these items, such as these, they build in an electrical charge to prevent damage from lightning strikes. So, all of those are going to go over here on the positive cathode side. So, let's go to the battleship that... Uh, Luis Elizondro, and I'll show the video, is claiming that three Arcellas are attacking a battleship. What's really happening? An Arcella amoeba is reproducing using multiple fission in the water. A battleship pulls up. They pick them up on radar. And what happens? What is her response? Any children in the water or anyone watching, there's typically three. They're going to get two come out. And these guys are going to float up in the air, drop their suetopods, and investigate. Because that's the way God programmed the amoebas. And so what is it doing? It's an obstacle for 500 million years. There are no destroyers in the way. There are no nuclear power plants. There are no uh, island-sized plastic garbage in the middle of the ocean. Uh, there's no fracking. There's nothing in their way, and now this is in their way, and they're going to investigate. They're not attacking, and if it's a food source, they're going to feel threatened and attempt to consume it if it weighs uh, more than a child, and if not, if the battleship actually powered down and reversed to this, it would go back to what it's doing. So... Louis Elizondro's version is UFOs are attacking us and doing God knows what. I'm telling you, it's animals that God programmed to do this, and they're doing what they're supposed to do. Now, don't be an obstacle or a prick. If you prick them, they go away. That's probably not recommended because of the bacteria contents inside, so you're going to want to stay away from that. They do avoid chemicals, however, because of their age, they have become an extremophile. They're able to take higher and lower temperatures. So this chemical resistance in this test may not roll over. However, I've done saline tests. They do the exact same thing. They, they expire in three days. So they can't live in salt water. So they must have been born in fresh water or a different type of salt content. One of the two. But I know for a fact by the videos um, that these guys are freshwater and this is what's doing it. You can see the way that their movements are. 
they prefer dim light, okay? Not dark, dim light, and dim light is typically when the cattle mutilations occur or human mutilations. But over here, you got a problem with one on your property, all you got to do is give them light, they're going to want to go somewhere else. This temperature scale is also incorrect because I know for a fact uh, in the frozen tundra area of Russia, there are holes in the ice in the winter time and there is a nest in a location out there and that's them going through the ice making their way uh, into caverns underground uh, which is their home so we've learned about positive charges we've learned that these guys are merely going to float up drop their suede pods and try to float across and just like a mouse hitting a wall when they hit something they can't identify it it's just like a mouse they're probably going to change location and try to define its size it doesn't know what you are so all you got to do is put some lights on and power down pretty simple now you have got the basic lesson here so now I can go into the fun stuff and the fun stuff most people want to know about a UFO, so let's go there. Dr. Pius invented this UFO design, and it's probably going to look just like this. And that's rocking a United States sticker in the back window, folks, I guarantee you. So it's always nice to be number one. And here's yet another view. This is not the same thing. I'm kind of wondering what it was. Here is more, here's another, and here's another. Now, this is my favorite picture because I just found this not too long ago. And this is a United States uh, Space Force UFO. This is Dr. Pius's work in progress. This is the International Space Station, and this is a Amoeba Arcella. Now, why are these guys all together? It's really simple. There's bacteria growing in and out of all this space debris. In other words, the 19,000 satellites that are up in the air are growing bacteria. And guess what amoeba arcella does when something's in its way? Amoeba arcella travels to the moon and back and colonizes the moon long before we are here. So when she travels back and forth, these satellites weren't here before let alone 19,000 rings spinning around. Now, don't forget, in the next year, we're going to be launching 100 and 700 satellites in one shot, while the government has never solved the problem of bacteria, which is a game changer, because not only is our cella attracted and will attach herself, I'll show pictures of that, but also just the fact of having bacteria go, grow changes the external uh, charges on it, changes the external airflow, and can shift the pattern. And if this happens, enough of them uh, get contaminated. Uh, this could be a real game changer, folks. But right now, let's just bask in uh, some USA glory because, man, that would be one hell of a ride. So I'll show you the pictures again. You can look at Dr. Pius's uh, invention to verify this, and that's why they made it public, because it's the real deal, folks. So, I'm not going to do any particular order here. I'm just going to blow through. Uh, in part two, I'm going to do uh, how our cella flies, how she floats. I'll compare it to Dr. Pius's uh, UFO, probably. Part three is going to be the graphic cattle mutilation, human mutilation comparison. And they'll probably blow this video offline. That's why I'm doing it separate. But if you don't want to watch the gross stuff, folks, I get it. All I'm going to do is prove that uh, cattle mutilations all over the world uh, compared to the Dyatlov Pass victims compared to multiple mysterious murders in South America are all identical. They all have the hook line on the mouth, I call it. 
they all have been uh, cored out from the in from uh, the lower end and the upper end. They all have the same telltale signs across the board. They all have the Botox chemical in them. It's the same thing, folks. But I'm going to show the pictures just so everyone sees all the proof, but I will make that separate. This is Arcella Antarctica. This is her entering her home here. This is her home. Um, she lives in the caves underneath Antarctica. And there's a recent article. I forget the size of the state they compared it to. It was like Delaware, but it was a huge, huge find. And what's going on, folks, is the United States is trying to conquer Antarctica, except there happens to be one of the biggest animal dens underneath there, not a UFO. And there's a story that I'll probably find the pictures to here, but where roughly three scientists or four scientists went down and one died, and that guy, without question, found an Arcella nest, and the other guys are probably traumatized, so... That's what happens when you go into an animal nest. Now, this is Antarctica. This shows you the soil underneath. It doesn't show you the caves, but it gives you a good idea of areas that there could be. This is a uh, nuclear submarine poking through in Antarctica saying, I'm going to take over this place because I just haven't screwed the world up enough and we got to finish off Antarctica because now we're bailing and going into space. So... These are pictures of Arcella amoeba inflated. This is one of the three Navy videos. This is authentic. That's how Arcella inflates. She also does this design, especially when she abducts a cattle. And I've actually got a picture that's the only known cattle mutilation. And this is what she looks like when she's floating down to land. She's inflated her body. These are her uh, splines. She's uh, inflated it just like the same thing that we do when we land on Mars. We put that little balloon out to cushion it. She's protecting her nucleus in the inside so she can survive. So that's that series. Oh, maybe there was more. Nope. Okay, next series. Here's Arcella conquering the moon long ago. And these are most likely Apollo pictures. And what's interesting is I showed this in, I think, an introduction to uh, notchbacks. But if you look under a microscope and you get enough uh, amoeba arcellas on there to duplicate this look, like 50 of them, you'd have to have a big microscope and do a special setup, but it can be done and you back the lens off and you make it a little bit fuzzy, you get this exact same pattern right here. Uh, and all it is is them sitting next to each other congregating or social. And here's more. Here's one on Mars. It's not the moon kicking back. Not a crab. Here's another one on the moon that's enormous, sitting in a crater. You can clearly see the splines here, by the way, going through her structure. Here is another picture of a bunch of them. Here's quite a few. And you can see they make these patterns, and what's interesting, sometimes circular. You can duplicate this under the right settings. In other words, you don't necessarily need a microscope. You can do it some other ways using a sheet that's magnified. Uh, made out of plastic and put it over a larger piece of glass. But they come up with these predictable patterns, believe it or not. I know it looks a little bit random, but it actually is not. Here's some more, and you can see how many of these turkeys there are. There's a whole bunch of them. So, that was Arcella on the Moon. This is Arcella on the Sun. And this is a great picture. This is her recharging her, uh, I think it's low ion plasma. I've got it in the, another series here. This is Earth scale. Now she's really huge, and I explained how she flies, and she's not radiation proof. She came from our, our country, our planet. And what's interesting is she's learned to regenerate her cells so rapidly that she becomes partially radiation proof. 
The problem with that formula is there's so much radiation in space, she had to come up with a better idea. Uh, most likely, she could probably get to the moon with using her regeneration formula, but that only goes so far, and she obviously can't approach the sun. So what does she do to compensate? This is one amoeba arcella, and what she has done is she has grown her body by eating a lot of foods and nutrients, and now she's able to come by, drop her flagella, and she has learned to utilize uh, what I believe is called low ion plasma, and I've got all the formulas for you, and she's swinging on by here to refuel. Here's another picture of her coming in. Here's yet another. So that's going to conclude the Sun series. This is generic amoeba arcella. This is an older picture that was taken over. It appeared to be like a city hall way back in like the 40s. This is a great picture of amoeba arcella. You can clearly see the outline. She's lighting up the low ion plasma. It's spinning. It looks like a UFO, but it's an animal. Uh, this is a great picture because I matched this picture to the International Space Station, one that stuck to it. So keep that one in your head. This is Mexico 2001. Here's a bunch of them. Here's one that's angered that is not in a good mood because of these spires. If you see spires like this, I call them, in other words, like a haircut that's uh, short and uh, you put too much gel and hairspray in, that pokey look, that's what this is right here, and that's her warning system. This is the International, or pardon me, SDS-75, uh, the tether incident, showing an object passing behind a 12-mile long tether. I proved in... Uh, introduction and notchbacks that NASA lied and said these were icebergs or refractions of the lens or not another stupid answer NASA so this guy flew sideways so I knew it wasn't an iceberg and I showed that video and I have a picture of it I believe it's from North Carolina but hey I also got bit by one so ice cubes don't bite now this is a Foo Fighter there are many pictures of Foo Fighters why are these guys always here? Well, they're the recorders of the universe. They're the watchers, folks. But here he is in his glory. I have pictures from Vietnam, from the rivers, these guys coming up. Uh, it's amazing the amount of pictures when you know what you're looking for. So, there's another one. It shows this is clearly going behind the tether. Is not uh, anything between this tether and the lens as far as a refraction. This is one of the earlier picks, but clearly here, those are the pseudopods coming out. I believe another one's coming here and probably here. So there's the four as she spins in the air. Uh, you've seen this picture on the front. So let's go to the next series. This is the International Space Station series, and this picture is an amoeba arcella. I originally thought that they were shooting their waste into space, but they recycle it, and there's not much left on board. It could have been fluid, but what this is is amoeba arcella in this position. This picture was taken below uh, uh, atmosphere. The other is above in space. So the difference here is here she is inflating to float and accomplish neutral density. Here she has attached herself and she is deflated for the purpose of filling her vacuoles with the bacteria contaminants on the International Space Station. And it probably looks a little something like this. This is one that actually flew over our planet that is absolutely enormous. It's a government photo. It's incredible. Here is some more mold, some more mold. Here's the bigger picture so you can see it clearly and you can clearly see over here the pseudopods on this side. On the other side she's doing the same thing. Here is yet another one. 
that's floating. He's in the float position. He's bouncing from probably one satellite to another. This is 2015, long before 19,000 satellites, just to give you an idea that in 1957 you could actually look out your backyard patio without any obstructions. And now there's 19,000 growing bacteria. So, let's go to the next series. This is Pedro Ramirez, and this is Amoeba Arcella flying through the Aurora Borealis, and you can clearly see the suetopods on the top spinning, making her rotate. You can see her flash as she's mixing the low ion plasma, which is her propulsion system, and she is breaking and defying the laws of gravity. So she swims, she flies, and there's a UFO that matches. Now, I'm going to show you pictures that match all the way. And here it is. You can clearly see the suetopods here, and I showed you on that diagram. And here is the one that went sideways. I believe this is from South Carolina. But right here, you can clearly see the suetopods coming out. Look at this, folks. Not close. Here they are in a different position. But don't worry, I got a video that shows those coming out and going in, in motion. So, next series. This is where I go real, real big. You saw this on the cover. You saw this one. You saw this. This and this match. Everything matches. The side profile, the way they spin under a microscope. And you saw this match and this guy. So, Whoops, bodies don't go till last, so let's throw in some comedy and see what kind of humor I got. This is the United States Air Force identification chart. So as long as it's not a weather balloon, it's swamp gas, folks. And I support the blue, I never forget, 1988, baby. Now, here's what aliens do on Earth. Here's what humans do on Mars. You figure it out. And the new slogan, to protect their children. So, this is a very interesting story here. The United States Navy said that they saw UFOs and came forward. But it was really limited information and they left out a few details that on why they came forward and I know all those details. One of those details is these guys while flying at very very high speeds can match the speed of our black aces, the Concorde jet airliners and actually look for bacteria with their suetopods at those speeds. And if I was in a fighter jet and two suetopods attached to uh, my clear uh, cockpit cover there, uh, I would be filling up the urine bottle real quick. So, that's a part that's missing. What else is missing? Well, they describe the whole fleet of them, but nobody gets to see the fleet. Nobody gets to know all these other details. But here's what's funny. This is the story of those three videos, San, San Diego Tribune. But here's what's funny. This has nothing to do with Blink-182 or Luis Elizondo doing his smear campaign that UFOs are real. And here is a video from the Mexican Air Force. And... It's the same year, 2004. Now, wait a minute. Didn't this one say 2004? Oh, my. San Diego, Mexico. Hey, it looks like the Mexican government's better than the United States government because they showed this film in its entirety. Uh, if you look, there's actually a video that's approximately 20 minutes long, but here's the whole fleet that they didn't show you. So, 
little bit better information, but there's tons of videos out there. It's not just this. Uh, this has been going on for a long time. This isn't something new. So this is either going to be before the U.S. Navy three videos came out or right after, and I actually think it's the same event. So uh, let's get back to what I'm talking about. This is an amoeba arcella. If you look at the uh, Navy videos, there's one portion where you can clearly see that there's the hard shell and this shape here. And these guys are going to kind of flop down towards the center. And there you have your picture um, that's fuzzed out where you have zero detail. That is like 200 dots per inch resolution. You can't get information from that. That's the same thing NASA does on, on their pictures from... Uh, everything after the Apollo missions. Nice try. So here you see the uh, legs coming out. You see the shell. This is Amoeba Arcella. The same thing as the UFO videos. Here you can clearly see the suetopods. This is her in the inflated position. And I believe this is her inflating or a BS picture because this and this do not make sense. However, she has quite a few body shapes and this inflated color here is similar to this it is balloon like but i know this and this are authentic so this is really important this is the concord jet and it went from i think los angeles to france if i'm not mistaken uh, the neck uh, has a unique design here and it achieves i believe supersonic speed but this picture is two or three arcellas and I have the video and I'm gonna go there now if I can find it and here's Jeremy Corbell with the UFOs swarming the Navy ship So, this is Amoeba Arcella. If I was a pilot, I would freak the heck out if something actually touched the exterior of my vehicle with its suetopods. That's what's occurring in this picture. That's the little oopsie when the pilots went forward. Now, I'm sure they were edited, but without that information, uh, how do you know the rest of the story? So the reason everyone's freaking out is because these guys are doing what they're supposed to do. Now notice there's no bacteria obviously on this, so it took off and did its thing. I'm not aware of any crashes in history that have been caused by an amoeba arcella unless somebody panicked, but I've never heard of one to date. So let's go back. You've seen this. This is what the underside looks like. There's yet another amoeba. Whoa! What do we got here? What a awesome picture. So, remember I told you that uh, they're probably coming up to touching the jets? Well, they're about to in this picture. Here they are. You can clearly see they're inflated. Nucleus in the center. Same here. You can see this circular, I call it like a life raft, those old-fashioned yellow circular life rafts. You can clearly see that in this picture. Here you cannot. This is our culprit, and look at how close he is. So if you're in the Air Force, I do not blame you for coming forward. Another diagram. Remember I told you those suetopods on the top are going to keep poking out, so you'll keep seeing that. Here is the picture where it's going sideways. You can see the suede of pods. Uh, this is a dead ringer, folks. And the same thing here. This is the hard shell. Just so you know, a, a bunch of people clean these pictures up and they keep deleting faster than they get cleaned up. Now, how does she go from upper atmosphere to lower atmosphere? Because that's the bigger trick. Because that's where the space shuttle burns up. And this is a real deal picture. It's a one in a million. I can't find anything close to it. And it is not a portal. It is basically a hole through our ozone area, that layer of the atmosphere, 
And what this animal did was it dropped in through the top while there was a storm and it blew through while it was in a compressed format and it gets the benefit of this moisture through the storm so it doesn't burn up and it can use that regenerating its uh, cell structure formula. This is why it's successful at coming through. This picture is absolutely incredible. It has nothing to do with the UFO or God punching a hole through here. It's merely God's child coming on through. Uh, this is some amazing stuff. There's the last picture in that set. We're going to go past definitions. Uh, I'll show a little Dyatlov Pass here. Uh, this picture was taken in Colorado, believe it or not. If this one is the one I'm thinking of. It is. And these are amoeba arcellas coming in. And this picture actually matches a Dyatlov Pass incident picture. Now this is one of the camera rolls from the Dyatlov Pass incident. Uh, Zola Tadarov. And it's camera picture number eight. You can go to dyatlovpass.com and see all the picture rolls. But this is Amoeba Arcella, and these are her sway pods. It appears as though they're connected right here, but they are not. And she is balancing and spinning those little vacuoles. This is what happens when you're camping in Russia in the Ural Mountains. In the Russian spaceport, that's 70 miles away approximately, does a test similar to NASA's and calls amoeba arcellas out and then fires off parachute grenades to scare them away instead of using lasers or something. And then some of them went away up here and some of them landed because of the percussion. And unfortunately, these guys were in the wrong place at the wrong time. And the only thing that drops a human out of the air would be a very large bird or an arcella. And we don't have birds big enough to do this. This is upside down. So I'll correct it. And the person was taking this picture. You can clearly see arcella is angry with the lights. And that is the grounding of her to the ground is causing an electrical disturbance and this is her right here and right here and you can see that her spires are up all the way around and she's trying to get some rest here she's not had a good day so why are her spires up a little bit more here 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 because that is a parachute, grenade, bomb, whatever you want to call it, going off, and she's protecting her heart out her shell. She doesn't know the difference from nuclear war, from human animals that are tearing up the place from light. She's merely protecting herself. If the hikers thought that this was damage from an aircraft accident or something and approached, they would have been in imminent danger, but the truth is these guys in the snow have a range of an easy 300 feet, so these guys were sitting ducks. This is a picture from the Atlov Pass incident that matches another one, but I'm going to go forward here. Uh, I'm going to go back to the Atlov Pass with those final pictures. I think that's going to be the better uh, idea. These are samples that have been taking, taken in... Uh, different areas. I know North Carolina had samples. Uh, quite a few places have found samples as an understatement. And I actually know where to get them now. And you can see the comparison to the tentacles of a jellyfish. Uh, you can see this particular little curly Q function here is an identical match with the curly Q here. The difference is this is in the water. This has been in the air. So that is the difference in the discrepancy of the texture. This is no longer a crop circle, nor a saucer nest. It's an animal nest. This is an actual arcella nest. Crop circles were invented to cover this fact up, and they put Bill Gates' picture in there to prove it. You can see by the size of these children, this is obviously in about a 30-foot range, and all you would see if these boys walked up Arcella's body would fill all of this up to the top, 
and you would be looking down at what looks like a starfish and it would look like a balloon and these kids would want to jump on it and they would end up not having a good day. Now, here is regions of intense UFO activity since 1966. What do you know? There's always water. Gosh, I mean, that was really hard to figure out. They also really like water inlets that go to the ocean because there's more bacteria here at the crossover. So, let's go to the next set. This is how I advertise because I know my uh, data is 100% accurate. That's my video right down here, the last one. This is the FBI, and it's only illegal to lie to them, so I have nothing to worry about, hopefully. And this is President Joe Biden. So, that's my guerrilla marketing strategy. This is HARP, and I just found out something interesting about HARP. HARP is an imitation weather station. And what they are doing is exactly what Arcella does when she feeds into clouds. She's called a sprite, which is referred to as a spirit in the older days. She would fly up here, and when she grounds out and feeds her plasma, that causes storms and such. These guys have duplicated it from the bottom up to reproduce that. So, if you're in that area and you get some really freaky deaky weather patterns, you know where to go. Here's another picture, and I'm going to show you right here how they duplicated it. They're duplicating this bottom portion here to cause this effect. And what they're doing is instead of Amoeba Arcella filling up her vacuoles, which represent these white guys here, and spinning it to create that magnetic field around her, just like Dr. Pius's UFO. And she's fueling from here, and she's actually creating weather as a side effect. So this is quite an important guy here in our uh, arsenal. All right, that's it for HARP. I'm done harping on harp. And I already crucified Lewis. We get to the religious stuff. Now, I'm not going to step on anyone's toes with religion, so I'll just keep it spiritual. There's something serious going on. These are from paintings from roughly medieval times showing Arcella in her glory times three. Here's original pics. Same thing, two Arcellas. Uh, this is, there's an FBI document I'm going to go back to. This represents the different levels of heaven uh, or the stages between heaven and earth when you pass away or you meditate. And what's interesting about this FBI file is if you read it, they're saying that these guys come from this area here. And if you look up uh, watchers, I think I may have put it here, but if not, I'll go to it. I'll show you a really accurate description. There it is. This is what I found. And you can find this in uh, Daniel, if you're a Christian, in the Bible as well. The only reason I chose this is because I thought this was very interesting because I'm not a great Bible thumper and for the first time I recognize something. The watchers are bound in the valleys of the earth. You know, like uh, Antarctica, in Mexico, all the places we're having these sightings. Until Judgment Day. And the angels which kept not their first estate but left their own inhabitation. Didn't I prove they swim and fly, and that's them? He hath reserved an everlasting chains under darkness. Chains. What does chain mean? Remember multiple fission? Under darkness until the judgment of the great day. So what does that mean? It means if you're driving a nuclear sub under there and you're rolling them through your propellers and you just send in those electronic dogs to sick them out, well... You probably got a problem. And I'm actually going to show you a link to that 
at the end of this. This is the only FBI document I found that talks about anything close to religion. And I cannot uh, authenticate this because it's too easy to copy this from those time frames. If you go to any printing press, they laugh at the quality of this. But uh, it talks about uh, parts of the discs carry crews, other are under remote control, their mission is peaceful. You can go through this all, like pause it for a second. But here's what I thought was interesting. The region from which they come is not the astral plane, but uh, corresponds to the Locus and Talus, which is kind of a multiverse theory or what's between here and heaven, in other words, stages. So I'll let you look that up. Uh, I'm going to minimize this. So in case somebody wants to see the full document, I guess you can pause it and blow it up or take a picture of it. And let's see if I missed anything here. Oh, this is, uh, I think it's 1561 in Nuremberg, Germany. This event has already happened where uh, there were not enough good guys, which is these circles. That's amoeba arcella. This represents this test tube, multiple fission. This represents binary fission, and this shows it in the process. But there's a darker color here. So does she turn bad? Or when the government kills enough of them, does another species show up? I guess we're going to find out. So there's that. And I think that's it for the religion. And power systems next. Skinwalker Ranch. Remember we talked about those positive ion charges? Well, here's a magnetic uh, graph of Skinwalker Ranch. So I guess if I was in Arcella and I came through uh, upper atmosphere to lower atmosphere, this sure looks like a good place to land, and then you would probably see pictures of this, and this is actually Skinwalker Ranch, and these are actual little guys up in the air. You can clearly see amoeba arcellas. So I guess the guys at Skinwalker Ranch are chasing animals. Now, this is my spiral theory, and basically what I'm saying is when you poke in both ends of a human or an animal, what they're going to do with their pods is go in this small circular pattern and attempt to touch both of them. In other words, this is the pod. They would poke it in, and then they're going to start doing this motion until it gets cored out. It takes a little bit, and they're probably going to do it when they're airborne using gravity as an advantage. And this is the cholesterol bacteria I was referring to, and you can look it up. And you can find that this was sampled from Los Alamos uh, Laboratory. This was the only thing they came back positive for, and they lied and said it wasn't important. This is what numbs the body and pacifies and liquefies the internals. This is a picture of great ham. I only did this for the spiral effect, so you understand uh, that when uh, Arcilla amoeba has this up in the air, She's using gravity to force down and do this thumping sensation, kind of like if you overloaded your wash machine with too many clothes, and that makes, makes her efficient. But also on the bone areas, you'll see what appears to be styration marks, and those are actually just her natural teeth. So, sprites. I really like sprites. I wish I had more pictures here, but this is a sprite. It is known a uh, hundred years ago as a non-weather pattern as a spirit. And this is amoeba arcella. You can see the hard shell outline. This would be represent her vacuoles. You can see as she charges up the different processes. This is a crystal clear picture of her vacuoles as she fills them up. You can see it's electric. And here's yet another picture. She would have the cloud layer right here. This would be the storm going on. And then all you see is this reflection and a little bit here. 
but this is clearly the vacuoles as they're around in a circle. She's clearly filling it. And this tells you the whole story. And it's interesting. They use words like ghost and sprite and negative sprite. Huh. And troll, my favorite. Now, when this guy's recharging, like this picture, there's a side effect down here. And I forget what they're called. Lightning balls, plasma balls, uh, suck my tennis balls. So, basically, when this guy's filling, if any excess drops, you're going to get that effect. So, I've shown you that. I showed you the UFOs, and this is what started me after UFOs. I thought this was an Arcella, and interestingly, this is what it is. NASA told the truth, and you can clearly see that that's what this item is. And there it is. But what's interesting is not long after I found four Arcella pictures, and then I solved cattle mutilations, the DLF pass, and quite a few other things. So, I'm glad that I was wrong. Now, I'm going to switch and show you some of my web pages, and I'll try to go through them a little quicker here. Uh, these are sprites you can clearly see here, really beautiful pictures, the same pictures I showed you before. There's a 4K video I'll show you so you can see what the web page is. Here's something that's interesting is when they went past uh, the moon, uh, they obviously are on Jupiter. So I've got one here, but actually, if I can find this picture, uh, it's not just Jupiter. There's another planet, but I already listed it. But Jupiter is one of them, and it makes sense. And this shows you a picture, but they made a discovery. 200-mile-long sprites. So remember how I said they were big in outer space? That's how they compensated. Uh, it looks like they have the ability to recondition planets. Now, this is a picture of that in process. Because if you look here and you discover that same last diagram of the weather patterns, you're going to come to find that there's a lot of sprites in here. Really hot stuff, guys. Now, sprites discharge. Well, I guess I found the other planets. Venus, Jupiter, and Saturn. And then here is the explanation of the charges. That means you can build a UFO. Now, this is a little bit of research into the Nuremberg event which is really, really important because that didn't really pan out so hot, but we got lucky. This is more battles that have happened over time. So, there's been a lot of, and this is a absolute Arcella, by the way. I'm going to go through the UFO list and tell you what I think are Arcellas. This is Luis Elizondo. I don't even care how to pronounce your name. Uh, talking about the battleship with UFOs uh, waging war. Uh, I hate to say it, but it's an animal from the Ordovician period. Now, here's more on the NASA. This is the original article. It's real important for me to give credit to Ken Rice. He did a great job. And admire his work and his discovery. Let's see. NASA found a giant underground cave in Antarctica almost the size of Manhattan. So I guess that's pretty big news and they show very little info as they always do. And here is references to watchers in the Bible and more references. And remember, I also said Daniel, and you can merely look up uh, watchers. And this is Dr. Pius's crazy invention that he ripped off uh, from an animal. 
Uh, this is really interesting. U.S. Navy laser creates plasma UFOs. So I'm wondering if they've advanced so far that they can actually ride lightning bolts. Boy, that'd bring new meaning to don't mess with me, you're going to ride a lightning bolt. Now, here's what's interesting. This looks like a schematic on how to destroy angels or watchers. So I figured you might want to read Forbes. Here's the drive, the original patent. This is the video. Another laser pointer. There's many of them. I don't recommend that. Here's more Book of Enoch. Uh, this displays those layers. If you're interested in the LOCAS and that FBI file, this is what you should look up. And that LOCAS and Talon's information is probably going to be within here representative of one of these layers. So that would be an interesting read. This is that Concord jet UFO, and there's actually more pictures of it, believe it or not. You can see the Foo Fighters. There is that. This I got to show. A lot of people told me they've never seen this. And what's really funny is I know I saw this in a classroom because in the 80s they used to close down uh, our classrooms and let us watch TV and see all the launches. So I actually saw this. It's not super secret. It's uh, out there and this is the entire video and you can see tons of analysis. But as they zoom in, you can clearly see that these are not icebergs. They are flying. You can see intelligence. You can also see what they always do at some point they're going to come up to this and they're going to touch it with their suede pods and I'm even going to fast forward just for the heck of it and see if I can't find it because I know where it's at let's see now I know I showed this in an earlier video so I know the information's there but uh, some of these guys actually stop midstream and, and make hard rights, hard lefts, and a lot of people have done analysis, but it's blatantly obvious that these guys are spinning. The guy that originally named them the notch back was wrong. This isn't a notch. You don't stick a Tesla coil up its butt and it becomes something. This is an animal, and it's really, really a neat animal because here it is in its unnatural state in outer space. And here's an interesting article. This is very recent. NASA's deploying robo, spot robo dogs to Martian like caves on Earth. And they're doing them at uh, locations that only Arcella lives. Now, what are these used for? Well, when something they feel is a threat, they send these guys in to eliminate them. So here's our government at work again, folks. You can also find articles where they're dropping these bombs. I know I have one of them, and those were designed to exterminate them under the ocean and water levels. Uh, and I could not find the article again, and I bookmarked it too. Unfortunately, I've had six hard drives magically get smoked right through my security system right before my eyes. So... Forgive me, I lost one, but it looks like a little capsule being dropped in the ocean, just like this. And this is what it looks like when they blow up God's children, the Watchers. And here's Harp, more Watchers. And this is NASA doing a 4K video of sprites, and I thought that this would be kind of amazing to show. If you're in North Carolina or Colorado or Oregon and storms come in and you see these guys, you know what they are. Now, this is that uh, footage showing them swarming, and why are they picking them up on radar? Well, because it's a living creature. Very simple. 
This is an explanation of ball lightning, which is a side effect of them feeding off of the low ion plasma. Here's another astral plane. Uh, this, I bookmarked, is where the UFO splits into two, and you can see this video uh, on blurbsurfer.com. And it's readily available out there. All you have to do is look up the UFO splits in two. And don't forget my little definition here. And I'm going to go back to it because I know where it is, is in my definitions. And it's not this one. It is. this one. So that is exactly what's happening. It's not a UFO, unfortunately. But we do have an American UFO, and that's pretty badass. So more harp, more amoeba pictures, so you can clearly see where they're at. This gives you an idea of satellites. Now, here's a list of UFO things that are unsolved. And I didn't even get past the first one, fiery disks. Look at how far back it is. And how do they report it? Fiery disks were encountered floating over the skies. So we got notchbacks. Um, I can go through this whole list and bang a bunch of them out, I guarantee you. The 1561 Nuremberg. Here's another one where it happened over uh, Basel. Those are definitely notchbacks. Um, Korea had the same thing happen. Uh, look at this. It looks like a halo or a washbowl, and it's divided into two. What do you know? So basically, not to be disrespectful to the UFO people, but it's not a UFO. It's an animal. Now, I know I've solved a ton of these in here, and I honestly could care less because I don't even count this, but the Battle of Los Angeles was important. There's a lot of incidences. One of them that stood out to me was the Washington, D.C. flap, and uh, the radar contacts were at three different airports. I'm not sure if this is the one. It's the one where they fly over the White House. I know that that one is, and if you go through here, what you're going to come to find, Arcella, 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 and she's the recorder of the universe, she's uh, probably got the same boss as me, God, and uh, she's good. So here's Dr. Pius and his invention that he ripped off from an animal. Uh, this is an interesting story. I told you about the scientists in Antarctica. Here's the stories, and they said that Vladimir Putin was developing a shape-shifting killer octopus. Sound familiar? A shape-shifting amoeba with octopus arms like suetopods? So, I do believe that a scientist got killed. There's no question in my mind. Um, was it tragic? Yes, but when you go in... You know, you're going to have problems when there's an animal now. Animal 46B might be its name, but Arcella prefers the Watcher because God named her first. So there's that story. I looked it up under Antarctica Scientist Dies. Uh, this is, I've been dying to do this. This is Linda Moulton Howe. You can rent her for $4.99 or you can buy her for $14.99. And it's a ripoff. And it's an hour and five minutes. And look at this. I'm showing you all kinds of science. She names her name because she wants her paycheck. And it's Spartan 1 and 2. And their faces are blurred out like a Tony the Tiger commercial. And these whistleblowers make a bunch of claims. And there's never any facts because it's Linda Moulton Howe. Linda Moulton Howe is responsible uh, for making the video in the 80s of the cattle mutilations. I've never seen it, but what's interesting is it is 2021, and she's still milking that story. She hasn't done anything with her life but milk this to death. It's unbelievable. Folks, the 80s to now is 
40 years on one story, just so you know. And she's MUFON. Who's MUFON? That's those UFO people where they arrested the boss for being a pedophile. Yeah, pedophile. You know, little can of lighter fluid and a match. That's their boss. That's how tight their uh, hiring protocol is. And these people ain't any better, I assure you. This lady is uh, probably New Mexico MUFON, and for Colorado, I got UFO nut. I got a guy who's a uh, volunteer uh, deputy that got fired. Come on, Jack Osborne did it, and he they want to hire the guy as a policeman. This guy got fired. Hey, Jack Osborne, what do you got to do to get fired as a reserve deputy? I mean, you got to be pretty bad. And now he's an expert telling you there's chupacabras. So I don't like liars. I don't like people making money off of complete lies with zero science behind it. I think all this money should be refunded. And by the way, really disappointed. Trump and Putin, you lost it. Not worth buying. So there's your review. Now, this is Thinker Thunker. I don't know what he's talking about when he's in the video, but that's okay. I usually just kill the volume and I get more out of it. This is our cell amoeba. It's a great picture. You can clearly see the balancing of her sueda pods here. It's going fast, but the guy's going to slow it down, and you can see him come out. And he thinks this is an alien spawning children, and the end of the world is here. God knows what. But... If you know science and you got 50 bucks for a microscope and you know a science supply place, you too can see these in your house under your microscope. Now, let's see the suede pods a little clear. You can see as she comes around, you can see she's balancing here. And what she is doing is using her body to spin and keep the chemicals going so she can have her magic. And she does that by swinging her suede pods right here. Now... He slows it up. There you can see the suede pod coming out, and it's merely coming out to balance, but it's moving at such a high rate of speed you can't see the tongue portion except right there just because it's moving real fast. And now he's slowed it down, and we can clearly see the suede pods reacting to the balancing effects of neutral buoyancy. So I showed you this Mexico video, which was awesome. And I showed you these. My gosh, I'm excited. This is over. So, this has been UFO Disclosure Data Dump. Coming up next, how our cella flies. Then the third one is the graphic picks to comparison. And when you add all three up, Cattle Mutilations, Dietlov Pass, the Navy video solved by Mike Kilgore.